Hi, 317. Um, happy Saturday. I was um, football mom today. So as I was reading through some of the discussions, I think there's some great conversations and amazing questions over the read aloud and over Socratic seminars. Um, so one thing I wanted to kind of chat through and challenge you as you're advancing the conversation in the discussion boards, thinking about all the literature, making sure that you're reading through and even going and researching some additional um, information about read alouds. One thing that I think is super important and stress in any classroom, whether it's the littles in pre-K or up through seniors in high school and even the adult learners, is the importance of the foundation of relationships. I agree that a random popcorn read aloud can be detrimental for your students given zero relationship building. I think it's important that from the get-go, you do a lot of team building and class building in your classrooms. Because when you do that, the anxiety lessens, um, the risk lessens when I know everyone. The other thing I think that is important to understand and, and do some further research on in regards to read alouds is reading aloud doesn't mean I'm reading aloud to the whole class. So as a teacher, I want to make sure that I'm doing a read aloud um, to model fluency, to model pace, to model academic vocabulary and, and presentation skills, perhaps. When I'm asking my students to read aloud, there's a variety of ways I can do that. And I rarely recommend read aloud to the entire class. I think that can present um, a lot of unnecessary anxiety, especially in classrooms where there's minimal, if not any, relationship building. So first and foremost, establishing those relationships is huge. But read aloud can also be done in partners where lots of people are reading at the same time, so my voice is being heard by my partner. You also might think about centers or you might think about a teacher working one-on-one -on -one or a para working one-on-one -on -one with a student. There's also whisper phones, and some of you might be very familiar with that. A whisper phone is like a PVC pipe, and it looks like a telephone, but you whisper into it because the sound is magnified. And it helps a student, especially our ELLs, they can hear themselves talk hear themselves. So even if everyone's doing a whisper phone, it's just you hearing your own voice. So lots of different ways to view a read aloud. I know that um, reading through some of the discussions, there's a lot of anxiety that comes from that or a lot of negative experiences in your per um, personally. And I will never forget in seventh grade asked to um, being asked to read aloud, I absolutely hated it. I hated doing a presentation in front of my sophomore leadership class in high school because I was petrified of speaking in front of a class. Funny now how I, I love, I love it. It's wonderful, but I also have to have um, grown in, um, in confidence in myself, and I think we have to establish that in our classrooms as well. So as you're reading through each other's discussions, I challenge you to research further. Make sure that you're looking at all the literature and kind of seeing different perspectives. I would also encourage you to talk to some of your colleagues or um, peers in, in the classrooms or even talk about it on a Zoom session with your um, TAP success coach. How are people seeing read alouds as successful and beneficial for students? The other thing, I saw a lot of really great questions regarding Socratic seminars. And there is such a variety of ways to do Socratic seminars. One of my favorite that I've ever seen was in a fourth grade classroom, and it was two Socratic seminars going simultaneously. What I love about Socratic seminar is the teacher is removed completely from the environment. So in order for a teacher to remove him or herself from the environment, once again, a relationship has to be established between the students. Otherwise, we have potential for disrespect. We have potential for negativity. We also have potential for absolute silence. Socratic seminar is not something that you can do without a lot of prep work. 
in this particular fourth grade classroom. It was about November um, when I walked into this classroom and they had been reading as a class for about a week a couple different articles over a particular topic. And so what the students were able to do is in each Socratic seminar, students wrote questions, higher level questions, those questions that are um, encouraging critical thinking, a deeper level, higher level blooms. Um, they cannot be answered in a one or two word phrase. And they brought their questions. Each circle was happening simultaneously. So there's that silent roar sometimes when we're a little bit unsure about being the only voice heard in the classroom. And I loved how the teacher started it off and said, I want everyone to go around the circle and say your question. A couple different reasons why I love that as an introduction to a Socratic seminar. Everyone has already spoken once. Sometimes all it takes for that one student who is very shy or anxious to get their voice out, I'm required to read something that I have already written and it's already been approved by the teacher. So I don't need to worry about somebody looking at me and saying, that was really stupid, right? We've established relationships, so hopefully that never occurs in a Socratic seminar, but we also know that we're dealing with children and humans and even adults can get a little heated in discussions so I like that everyone went around the room they introduced themselves even in November they said hi my name is Liz and my question for the group based on the article was blah 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 now notice I said that very formally up on the whiteboard in front of the class there were sentence starters students were encouraged to use them but not required to so what else does that help me with it gives me something to look at because we also know that students get stage fright sometimes no matter what the relationship status is in the classroom or how many class builders I've done I need a little bit of a Oh, what do I say? So if my teacher has already provided a few sentence starters for me, that is awesome. So the very first sentence starter was, hi, my name is blank. And the question I have from the article is blank. So I could look at that and read my question. I've already spoken once, which is half the battle as we're getting our students to talk. The other sentence starters that she had was a way to agree respectfully and a way to disagree respectfully, as well as a way to advance the conversation. So these are also called gambits. And something like that, you can look up on Pinterest, you can Google, you can ask your colleagues. But providing my students this opportunity just encourages really great discussion. This would be great in, if I'm writing a lesson plan and doing a Socratic seminar, I could write in my differentiation box, but I'm thinking a universal design. So I'm putting it into my lesson plan, knowing it might for sure benefit one or two students because I know it's on their IEP to have specific written down sentence starters, but who does that not benefit? It benefits everyone, even the student who feels very confident speaking in class, when they're asked to speak something specific, it's nice to have that gambit or that sentence starter. The third thing I wanted to address, and I just kind of thought about this, so I didn't say it at the very beginning, was the idea of brain breaks. And I am a huge proponent and an avid practicer, practitioner, an avid practitioner of brain breaks. This is going to look completely different depending on your students. I know a lot of the discussion questions, or a few of them had to do with PBS students where transitions are already extremely difficult. But I loved, and I didn't write down who said this, but whoever said a brain break can also include um, mindfulness. A brain break simply means that we're pausing from the content and we're giving our brains a break. For some classes, that could be go noodle. For some classes, that could be um, a little bit of yoga. For some classes, that could be 37 seconds of silence. For some classes, that might be some quiet moving and I'm letting them draw a picture on the whiteboard. So there's lots of different ways to incorporate brain breaks. I'm a big proponent of making sure that after a certain amount of time, and it depends on your kiddos, so it's hard to really say after 10 minutes you need a brain break. When you look out to your classroom and you see the glazed over looks, or even just the tired looks, or the 
the sugar high recess after lunch, when your students come in, there's something that we have to do to ground them. When their brains are hurting from all of the wonderful content you've given them, they need a break. So what does that look like for you? I encourage you to do some more research. I encourage you to reach out to your colleagues and just take a poll. What are some ways that they ground their students? There is wonderful, wonderful research out there. There's amazing things on Teachers Pick Teachers, but guys, there's free stuff out there too. Pinterest, Ed Pinterest, all of those are great tools and resources to get out there and figure out, okay, my students need a break and it takes me 15 minutes to get them transitioned from one thing to another. So I need something calm. What might that be? And it doesn't have to take long, but our brains need a break. And so do littles in preschool and so do seniors in high school and so do adults as they learn. So, I love the questions. You guys are doing a fantastic job really diving in there and connecting to the material, remembering your previous responses and your um, experiences. Sorry, my kiddos are being crazy in the background if you can hear them running around. <laughs> So anyways, I just wanted to jump on here. Um, this is one way that I can interact with you guys is sending a little video and putting my two cents in because this would be a lot to type out and I don't think anybody would really read a whole lot of stuff. But you might listen to a, a video. So I hope you guys are having a great Saturday and I'll talk soon. Bye.